2013, our rulers added to this pile of rules that all of us must obey. And each of these rules is probably well intended, but together they strangle life. It's tough to find people who understand this or can explain it, so I was delighted when a lawyer I barely knew looking at this pile of regulations suddenly erupted with statements like this one. This is an agenda of control for its own sake. That's why regulators do what they do. Come on, I mean, control for its own sake. That They're not Machiavellian power freaks. I'm guessing you haven't dealt with very many bureaucrats. They like rules and they live to enforce rules. That went on to become part of my TV special, War on the Little Guy. It'll be shown on Fox again soon. And now the star of that special, Institute for Justice lawyer Jeff Rose is back to tell us about three new assaults on the little guy. Uh, this new focus is on food. That's right. We have a new food freedom initiative, and this is about grassroots movement of people who want to make and sell simple, wholesome, tasty food and the mile-high wall of regulations that they run into trying to do that. Food freedom. All right, well, let's talk about your first case. You represent small farms in Oregon that sell unpasteurized raw milk but are forbidden to let people know about it. I'm not allowed to put up an ad in my local health food store or take an ad on the newspaper or go to a festival and promote our farm. When I have a new customer come, they can't even find the farm because I'm not allowed to put up a sign. How am I supposed to be able to make this business work if I'm not allowed to talk about it? What's the logic? There is no logic. If something is legal, the First Amendment says you get to talk about it. Well, but the, the bureaucrats, and they wouldn't talk to us. They say this is in litigation at the Agriculture Department. They must have some reason. Yeah, the, the bureaucrats think that the food that people have eaten for thousands of years just isn't safe. That, handle, that drinking raw milk is like uh, juggling hand grenades or something like that, and so they don't want you to do it. Well, I think they have a point. It's unpasteurized, but you ought to be free to, if, it's, if you're allowed to, to sell it, you ought to be allowed to tell people about it. That's right. And there are people out there who want to drink raw milk. And this is a free country, and they should be able to do it. A relatively free country. Next case, do you have a vegetable garden? Hope you don't have it in your front yard in Miami Shores, Florida. This couple has had one there for 17 years. They grew onions, peppers, lettuce. But this year, local government said, rip your garden out. You can have crazy garden gnomes, you can have flamingos, you can have pineapples, you can have peaches, but you can't have carrots. Look at it this way, John. Washington was a farmer. The farmer founders didn't fight a revolutionary war in order to create a system of government where people can't grow carrots on their own land. Suppose you like to cook. Suppose you're good at it and you'd like to sell some of what you make. If you're in Minnesota, watch out. This is Jane. Jane bakes cookies and cakes, and breads, and scones. Jane bakes the treats in her immaculately clean kitchen at home. Jane takes her treats to the local farmer's market. They're a hit. This is a bureaucrat from Minnesota. Minnesota doesn't like small businesses like Jane's. When customers want to place special orders for Jane's treats, Minnesota says no. Maybe Jane can sell her treats from home. Not gonna happen. They're worried about food safety, I assume. And if bureaucrats had their way, all we would do is eat pablum that is perfectly sterilized from spoons and bowls that the government gives us. And that's wrong. As long as you've got a recipe and an oven, you should have a business in this country. They allow her to sell it at the farmer's market, but not other places. Not other places. And if you want to sell food and people want to buy your food, it shouldn't matter whether you're in a farmer's market or over Amazon.com. And the farmer's market, she can't get more than $5,000 a year in sales. That's $96 a week, not enough. Of which, of which, what is profit? Maybe $10 a week? They're saying you can have a job as long as you don't make more than $10 a week at it. It's crazy. She has interest from stores, job sites, special orders, catering jobs. Can't do it legally. Can't do it legally. And this is a thing that small business entrepreneurs, not just people in the food area, run into across this country. And that's why the Institute for Justice is fighting back. And again, the Department of Agriculture in Minnesota said we can't comment because of 
the lawsuit. When you take these cases, do you tell people like her, go ahead and sell it, or you say stop until we win your case? Um, usually we tell them that you better stop until we win the case if they're going to get in serious trouble, except when it comes to the First Amendment. If it's free speech, you go ahead and do it.